Hello and welcome to the Open News. In today's episode we're going to be covering everything from an improved Raspberry Pi being released to junk LCD games now being available on the Internet Archive, right now on Linux Lounge. Well, first up we have this. New Raspberry Pi 3 model has faster CPU and better networking. Well, this is great. One of the coolest miniature computers I've ever seen, the Raspberry Pi, has had a pretty brilliant hardware upgrade of sorts. The new version of the Raspberry Pi has been updated to include a faster CPU, improved networking capabilities through Ethernet, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and most interestingly to me, a heatsink. Now, Yes, you could buy a third party heatsink before now, but this is the first time one's been included out of the box, and officially of course. Now, the heatsink is interesting to me for two reasons. One, the Raspberry Pi is always seemingly run hot. I'd put down, that down to the fact that most PCs have a case stopping you from touching the hot components, unlike of course the Raspberry Pi. Um, but uh, the heatsink should in theory help with this. But it should also help the Raspberry Pi reach higher speeds when overclocking, which is great because many people actually do overclock these things, probably because of how easy it is to do. However, this model isn't without its downsides. For example, there's been an increase in power consumption, uh, so it may be the case you need a specific power supply to run the Pi, but all in all this seems like a great hardware refresh with some much needed additions. Well, next up we have this, Zorin OS 12.3 released. Well, this is interesting, Zorin OS has released a point release to Zorin OS 12. Now, this stands out to me because it comes in just before the release of Ubuntu 18.04 next month, Zorin OS of course being based on Ubuntu. Presumably this is a sort of, well, final finishing touches release before Zorin OS 13. Now, I personally think the Zorin OS is great, and this update adds quite a few things that makes it even better. As for what this update adds, well, for one, it updates much of the included software, such as, you know, the kernel and any other software you may be using. Uh, most notably Wine, which has been updated to version 3.0. This should uh, significantly help with Windows software compatibility. Though, I'm still not really sure about releasing a distro with Wine out of the box, especially when said distribution is intended for new users, but uh, that's a topic for another video. As for improvements to the OS and the Zorin desktop, well, Zorin OS now has support for setting folders to different colours in the file manager. This is of course useful for organising folders and telling what is what at a quick glance. Now, Great feature to have, honestly, and I don't think enough Linux desktops have it. Also, with this new update is the Window List Launchers and Preview, effectively allowing you to hover over open windows and having a look at what they are, which is another feature that I consider to be quite useful. Well, all in all, this sounds like a brilliant release of Zorin, and I will certainly be giving it a closer look at some point. Well, finally we have this. The Internet Archive put your favourite LCD handheld games online. Well, this really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I still think it's cool, noteworthy and interesting. Anyone remember those cheap LCD handheld games? Well, unfortunately I do. Well, now thanks to the Internet Archive, you can play them online, if you should so desire to do that for whatever reason. Now, the selection of games here is actually quite impressive. There's those older Tiger Electronic games, those bloody Tamagotchi things, to some of the more elaborate home arcade machine things. Now, reading into this is actually kind of interesting. Apparently these games can't be dumped for emulation without completely destroying the original hardware. I'll uh, put some more in-depth articles in the description. They do make for some rather interesting reads. But uh, either way, this is actually quite an interesting thing to archive, and it's probably the easiest way I've found of playing these old games if you should so desire to do so. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking that little bell icon to get notified of future open news episodes. With that being said, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.